exercise 6.7. We'll bring us through learning objective number two. Equivalent units, weighted average method. Greenhouse Inc. processes cleaning fluid used as a base for household cleaning products produced by various distributors. Two departments are involved, mixing and heating. Data relating to liters of cleaning fluid processed in the mixing department during October are provided below. So we're given work in process uh, at October 1st and October 31st in terms of the units and in terms of percentage complete. Now this is only in this particular department. We're not given any cost categories. We're just told percentage complete. All right. Total of 25,000 liters of cleaning fluid were started into processing during October. All materials are added at the beginning of the processing in the mixing department. Required, compute the equivalent units for October for the mixing department, assuming that the company uses the weighted average method of accounting for units. So we're looing just the, um, the quantity schedule and the equivalent units, which is part one of a production report, right? So let's uh, write that down, our quantity schedule and equivalent units and the first thing we're going to do is the quantity schedule and then we'll get to equivalent units right now remember when we do the quantity schedule it's units to be accounted for and it's typically our work in process beginning count which we're told is 25,000 and units added to production that month which is another 25,000 so we have to account for 50,000 units they must have gone somewhere right that's the next part units accounted for as follows and we start with units transferred how many units were transferred and we're told 45,000 units were transferred during the month And 45,000 more units, units were transferred. Our work in process ending count, we're told, is 5,000 units. For a total of 50,000 units. These two numbers should equal each other. There is your quantity schedule. Our equivalent units will produce over on this side, and we list our cost categories. We're not given any cost categories, so we're just going to list it in one category. We're just going to assume all costs are combined into just one manufacturing cost. So the units transferred, how many equivalent units is that? The same thing, 45,000. The work and process ending count, we have 5,000, but we're told within the question that the work in process, October 31st, percentage complete is 70% complete. So if 5,000 units are only 70% complete, it would be the same as 3,500 units being 100% complete. So our equivalent units of production are 48,500 uh, 48, units. That's it. That was, that was all that was required. There was only one cost category, so that was easy. If there were multiple cost categories, then we would have did a, a, a multiplication for the percentage complete in terms of each cost category, but there wasn't. That is 6-7. Exercise 6-8 will lead us through all the learning objectives. Learning objective 2, learning objective 3, learning objective 4, Learning Objective 5. This will bring us through a full production schedule. So let's see what we have here. Equivalent units and cost per equivalent unit. Grand River Company produces a high quality insulation material that passes through two production processes. Data for November for the first process follows. And we have a lot of information here. We have our work in process at our beginning and ending counts and the percent complete with respect to both beginning and ending inventory for work in process. We have costs added uh, uh, during the period, units started during the period, uh, and we have two types of costs. We have material costs and we have conversion costs. So we have a lot. It looks daunting, but let's just start and as we go through each one, we'll notice that all we're doing is we're pulling out specific information at specific points in time. Required, number one, assume that the company uses the weighted average method of accounting. 
for units and costs. Determine the equivalent units for November for the first process. So we're basically, to get that, we're doing the quantity schedule. Quantity schedule and equivalent units. The quantity schedule starts with units to be accounted for. Units to be accounted for. And the first thing we account for is our work in process beginning count. And we're told that our beginning count was 80,000. Then it's units started in production. Units started in production and we're told from the data that that was 300,000. So we have 380,000 units total. Total units. And that's our total units to be accounted for. 380,000. Our next section will be units accounted for as follows. Units accounted for as follows. Units transferred out. Units transferred because they're 100% complete. Units transferred, we're told, were 320,000. Doesn't take much to see that our work in process, our end count should be 60,000. When we refer to the data, we find that it is, in fact, 60,000. So there's our 380,000 units. That is our quantity schedule. That's our quantity schedule, this column. Now we're going to do our equivalent units, which we do over here, and we list them in terms of cost categories. We're given two cost categories. We're given materials, and we're given just conversion costs. And remember, our conversion costs are direct labor and overhead. So of the units transferred, it is the same units right across. All we do is we just extend this number right across. For the work in process ending count, we have 60,000 partially completed. We need to know what percentage of that 60,000 is done in terms of material. We're told work in process ending inventory, 45% with respect to materials of the 60,000. That means that's the same as having 27,000 fully complete units with respect to materials only. With conversion, we're told 20%, which is the same as 12,000. So this will give us 332,000 equivalent units in conversion costs and 347,000 in equivalent units in terms of materials. That is part one. It asked us to determine the equivalent units. Number two, compute the cost per equivalent unit for November for the first process. There's number one. Let's go with number two. Number two is really just the second part of a production schedule which is our cost per equivalent unit. And how do we start these? Well, if we start this with units to be accounted for, we start this with costs to be accounted for. And our first cost, if our first count is work in process, our first cost to be accounted for is work in process beginning balance. And this will be our total column total dollars. And we're just going to continue on with the materials of the conversion account. And what do we have here? We have to find our uh, original, our work in process beginning balance for both, uh, for both accounts. And we're told material cost in work in process inventory November 1st was 76600 So we can put $76,000 $600 here, and we are also told, just reading off the numbers we're given, that there was 34900 in terms of conversion costs. Adding these two together, our work in process beginning balance was 111500 Then, if we have units started, we must have costs started, so costs that were added, costs added during the period, uh, we are told for conversion costs added during November was 234500 so 234500 five. We're told that materials costs that were added during the month were 410000 And if we add these two together, we get 644500 
500 for a total of 756,000. This will be 486,600. And our conversion cost will total 269,400. We want our equivalent units. We've already figured out our equivalent units, 347,332. So 347,000 and 332,000. And I should get in the habit of making sure that we distinguish between dollars and units here. Then our cost per equivalent unit, look at this, cost per equivalent unit is the section. Last line is cost per equivalent unit. It's simply our cost divided by our equivalent units, cost per equivalent unit. Here we'll get, and we get an odd number, but since there's so many units, look at the size, we're talking about 300,000. I don't want to end, I don't want to round it up to the penny. I'm going to round it up to the pip. Now in accounting, we can, uh, just to, to give you an idea, a penny is something like $1.27. That's a penny. A pip has two more two more units. So a pip is one one hundredth of a penny. So 1.2706 is six pips. 1.2743 is 43 pips. So I'm going to round it off to, to uh, uh, two more decimal places to the nearest pip, not the pe nearest cent. So I get a dollar forty twenty three and when I do this division over here plus uh, 269.4 divided by 332, I get 0.8114, which will give me $2.21.37. When you're dealing with huge, huge quantities in the hundreds of thousands, rounding off to the nearest cent might not be a good idea. Rounding off to the nearest pip makes far better sense. And most computer systems that do this in process accounting will round off to the nearest pip. So there's part two done, the cost per equivalent unit. Number three, determine the total cost of ending work in process inventory and the total cost of units transferred to the next process in November. That requires us to do the cost reconciliation, which is the third part. So you can see that I've moved the second, the answer to number two up to the top, just to keep it on the same page. And we're now we're going to do the answer for the third part, which is really just a cost reconciliation. Now, carrying on, if we have costs to be accounted for, this is costs accounted for as follows. And the first thing we want to account for is uh, the, the uh, units transferred out because they're 100%, so they're really easy to do. So all we're going to do is take our units transferred, and we're going to continue on with our columns. This is our materials, this is our conversion. How many units were transferred with respect to materials? Well, all of them, and we know we transferred 320,000 units. How many units were transferred with respect to um, our conversion costs? 320,000 units. Now how do we know there's 320,000 units? Because it tells us in the data units transferred to the next process 320,000. So that's all we're doing. To get our total cost here we can do it two ways. We can take the 320,000 times the material cost and add it to 320,000 times the conversion cost or we can use this over here which is called whole cost. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take 320,000 and we're going to multiply by 2.2137. And that will give us $708,160. So there's our units transferred. Now we have to do our work in process ending balance. And how we're going to do this is we know that materials is a cost of 1.4023 and conversion comes in at a cost of 0 0.8114. Our materials, our, our um, equivalent unit of materials, which we figured out in the first part, recall, uh, was 27,000. 
and our equivalent units in conversion, which we figured out in answer to part one, was 12,000. So 27,000 times 1.4023 gives us 37,854. 37,854. And our 12,000 times 0.8114 gives us 9,732. When we add these together, we get 755,746. So we can see that even though we've used um, our costs rounded to the nearest pip, because of the quantity that we're dealing with, we're still off by $254. Now, you can pretty much stop here, I think. I think you've answered the question. There's our units transferred. Here is our uh, work in process ending balance, the 254. Technically, you got to deal with that. But for the purpose of understanding the process you went through, you've got that. But let me show you, if you want to deal with that 254, let me show you how, how you're going to deal with it. <clears throat> we have units transferred is a total of 708,160. Our work in process ending balance, if we add these two together, we get $47,586. That gives us a total of $755,746. If we assume that that represents 100%, <clears throat> we can figure out what percentage 47 is of this total. And we get 6. Point, it looks like 296%. That would make this 93.704%. Uh, Multiply 93.704% by the 254, the 6.29 by the 254. To apportion this in terms of if we're short by 254, how much should we add to each of these numbers? Well, 6% of this belongs here because it represents 6% of the total. So if we multiply it by both the $254, we will get $238 should be added to our transferred goods. Another $16 should be added to our um, work in process. And we can do the same thing with work in process. We can see that work in process was 37854 in terms of material, 9000 in terms of conversion. So we can take the 47000 and figure out what is the material percentage of this number. And of that $16, we find that we can add to our ending balance $12.73 would get added to the materials cost and three dollars and twenty seven cents would get added to the conversion cost so to answer our question what was the value of the units transferred it would equal the seven hundred and eight one sixty plus the percentage of the un of, of the rounding error would give us seven hundred and eight thousand three hundred and ninety eight and our work in process ending balance would be 47,602. And if we add these two together, we find we get $756,000. 756 is what we had to account for. We have accounted for the 756. We had a little rounding error because we the size of the units were so large and these did not divide through to uh, whole numbers. That's the real world. Very rarely will it divide through to an even number. And most computer tracking systems will track this probably to about 8 and even 16 significant digits. 8 to 16 significant digits. These are what are called floating point numbers. So 8 to 16 digits so that this, this error wouldn't even be here. If there was an error, it would be by about a penny. And that would be about it. But if you're just doing this on your own, this is good enough. This was the answer. But if you want to be real world exact, you got to deal with that $254 rounding error. And how we deal with it is we just apportion it by percentages. So you're learning a little more outside of the chapter on what we do when things get a little bit messy, right? Well, it's the real world.